Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. The topic of today's video is acute myeloid leukemia. Before starting the video, I would like to tell you something because whenever you are studying a particular topic, I would highly recommend to watch my videos in the chronological order. I have created a playlist on hematology. You can go to my channel, go to hematology section. There you will find the list of videos. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Without much ado, let's begin. AML AML is acute myeloid leukemia. It is seen in 40 to 60 years age group people and it is called acute when there are more than 20% of myeloid blast. Myeloid blast and the lymphoid blast are of different types but whereas in this video we will only focus on the myeloblastic leukemia. In myeloblast, there is an enzyme which is very important for you to remember because in M acute myeloid leukemia the myeloid blast it can be differentiated because of the presence of an enzyme that is myeloperoxidase enzyme now there are also presence of some rod like structure in the cytoplasm and these are or rods these are nothing but the aggregates of the myeloperoxidase and these are only found in myeloblast so myeloblast remember that the myeloperoxidase enzyme and there is our rods remember these two very important points now we go to the subclassification which is usually done based on three parts first is the cytogenetic abnormality the lineage lineage and the surface markers before going to this part let's just understand the risk factors of acute myeloid leukemia First thing, it is due to the exposure of anti-neoplastic agents to the ionizing radiation such as UV light, X-ray, gamma rays and to the benzene exposure and because of some of the myelodysplastic syndromes and genetic conditions are also some of the risk factors of AMS, such as Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome and these things. Aplastic anemia, Fanconi's anemia, these are as well some of the risk factors of AML. Now, when AML is caused because of this genetic factor, myelodysplastic syndrome, it is called as secondary AML. Now, we know the risk factors. Let's just see here. As we know, acute leukemia has acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute myeloid leukemia. Whereas chronic can be uh, divided into chronic myeloid leukemia and chronic lymphoblastic leukemia. ALL being the most common. Now in newborn to 14 years of age, ALL is most commonly seen. Whereas at the age of 40 to 60 years, AML or CML are more common. Whereas above 60, it is CLL which is responsible. Let's go to the cytogenetic abnormality. Acute promyelocytic leukemia, this is characterized by translocation of chromosome 15 and 17. This translocation disrupts retinoic acid receptor which turns the cell's ability to mature, leading to buildup of promyelocytes. Now here, this all means that whatever this translocation happens right this disturbs it causes disturbance in retinoic acid receptor which are on the cell so what happens is because of disruption of this receptor the cell's ability to measure mature will be hindered if there is no maturing taking place that will lead to build up of the promyelocytes means the unmature ones now these have the hour rods. This hour rods can increase coagulation which becomes a medical emergency uh, from the, because of the condition DIC which is disseminated intravascular coagulation. Disseminated intravascular coagulation. For example, what treatment in this part is usually ATRA that is all trans retinoic acid. It is nothing but a derivative of vitamin A. What this does is, if vitamin A is supplied to this patient, this vitamin A binds to the retinoic acid receptor and it leads to maturing. Now we come to the lineage part. This lineage classification is so on. 
in myeloblast there is a monoblast aml which is nothing but acute monocytic leukemia where the monoblasts are not the premature cells these monoblasts build up they lack myeloperoxidase now the myeloperoxidase is not present in the monoblastic leukemia remember that but we can look for infiltrates of patient gums as you can see on this picture there are uh, many infiltrates or patient gums look in such condition that it leads to the breakouts as megakaryoblastic aml this is nothing but acute megakaryoblastic leukemia even these do not have the myeloperoxidase and this is most probably associated with the down syndrome erythroblastic aml is nothing but acute erythroblastic leukemia which is a rare type and it rarely occurs now let's move to the classification of aml classification of aml now here i have categorized this uh, acute myeloid leukemia in the following we have the myeloblastic leukemia which is poorly differentiated and this has 5 to 10% of occurrence now there are many kinds here as you can see but there are three main important which we need to focus on that is the myeloblastic leukemia with maturation what here happens is in myeloblastic leukemia there is maturation and it is because of the translocation of chromosome 8 and chromosome 21 whereas the prognosis of this type is good and it is the most common as it consists of 25 to 30% of occurrence whereas acute promyelocytic leukemia which is because of the translocation of t15 that is chromosome 15 and 17 even this has good prognosis but there is a chance of dic where it leads to medical emergency it occurs in 3 to 15% of patients whereas monocytic leukemia this has as we talked earlier the monocytic causes the gum infiltration and it is 10 to 20% occurrence if you are interested to go through the notes take these notes make sure you dm me on instagram i will send you the notes first when we go through the peripheral blood there we see it has the normocytic or macrocytic so the cells are normal in size or larger in size but they are not smaller in size as they need to be whereas the platelets there is because of this uh, blastic cells increase in this condition the maturance is hindered and the cells such as wbcs platelets and all are decreased so platelets are less than 1 lakh whereas wbc there is a chance that it can be less than 10000 or because of the uh, excessive cell blastic cells might cause excessive wbcs that is more number of wbcs myeloblast these have more granules and aurots whereas monoblast has less granules and no aurots as we discussed earlier in the monoblastic leukemia there are no aurots there seen but the main part in aml there is presence of myeloperoxidase present which we can see but not in the monoblastic as we have seen there is no myeloperoxidase in monoblastic monoblastic and megakaryoblastic bone marrow biopsy we usually see there is hypercellular and there is crowding and there is more than 20% of blast cells and these are usually replaced by the blast cells thank you for watching the video i hope it was beneficial and you had some good knowledge about acute myeloid leukemia if you like the video make sure you comment and please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell meet you in the next video audio jungle